Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and thank you for letting me join you here in TIC 2022. Now, over the past two difficult years, you, our tourism industry, have remained incredibly resilient. You know, you were born to be open, to welcome, to showcase, to connect, to bridge distances. But the pandemic caused you instead to close, shut your doors, to distance. It went against the very grain of your DNA as tourism practitioners and what many of you, many of us, joined the tourism industry to do. Over the past two years, CE, STB, Keith, myself, and colleagues from STB and other agencies spent days and nights on the ground with you and our tourism family. We did what we could to listen, to learn, and help to try to make it easier for you to operationalize the many, sometimes confusing, safety measures. Together with you, we tried to come up with ideas. We came up with a series of like pivots, vouchers, exits, pilots, you can name so many, uh, more than we can imagine. But we got to know you, we got to learn from you, and most of all, we got to be inspired by you. Wherever we went, we witnessed your resilience, your grit, your determination, and also your innovation. You did not give up. You were relentless in your engagements with us, uh, many times face-to-face, -face, many times in Zoom, many times online. I received countless of messages, emails, LinkedIn messages. Can you do this better? Can you do this better? Can you open this? Can you close this? It's many of them. But you pushed us, you encouraged us <clears throat> to open the sector. You came up with many ideas to keep our sector going in the midst of the crisis. You tried new things, reimagined the future of travel, and then invested in new and innovative products and experiences. You transform your businesses even during the toughest periods of the pandemic. You believe that tourism would recover and worked with us to keep your sales up, to catch the winds of recovery. For that, thank you for showing us the way. Now, tourism is important to Singapore. It is a key pillar in our economy that creates good jobs and opportunities for our people. And our tourism industry puts Singapore on the global map. It enhances our international standing and branding and strengthens our position as a global Asia node and a vibrant, livable and connected hub. We supported our tourism sector during the pandemic because, like you, we believe that we will again pursue and achieve our aspirations together. So in addition to the $320 million that we set aside for the Singapore Rediscovers vouchers, which aim at driving domestic demand, we also provided more than a billion dollars in support measures for our tourism sector over the past two years. We introduced measures to alleviate costs such as rental and license fee waivers, help our tourism industry upskill and build capabilities, enhance your products and experiences, and then amplify your events together. All the while doing so, all the while doing what we can to deal effectively and as best we can with the pandemic, so we can kickstart our domestic and international recovery plans. We have thus far emerged from the pandemic with one of the world's lowest fatality rates and one of its highest vaccination and booster rates. Now, with these foundations in place to deal with the pandemic, the measures to support our tourism sector helped our tourism business retain your core capabilities during the pandemic and set you up to catch the wind when global travel resumes. Now, there were already encouraging signs of recovery in our tourism sector toward the end of last year when we launched vaccinated travel lanes and with strong local demand for tourism offerings. As we now reopen our borders in earnest, we are reminding the world and global visitors who Singapore is, what we are about, and what we have to offer. We have focused our efforts in two fronts. First, many of you will know, and we are experiencing it now, we have taken a big step by relaxing protocols for business and leisure events. Many of you worked with us on the MICE pilots last year, and that was crucial in helping us pave the way to safely resume larger events like this one. So all of you played a part. In February and March this year, we announced we would reset 
our measures and subsequently further ease our protocols when the local COVID-19 situation stabilised considerably. We have now eased our local community safe management measures, which include increasing permissible group size of 10 for mask off activities, optional mask wearing in outdoor settings, removing zoning requirements for events such as these, expanding capacity limits for large events and settings of more than 1,000 people to 75%. And we will do more. When we ease these community measures, it helps to lay the foundation for us to live with COVID and return and resume normal activities in the long run. More importantly, it sends a message to the world that we are committed to open and reopen safely. At the same time, we will and we must take a balanced and sensible approach as we relax our measures so that we can ensure that these events remain safe and seamless for our locals and also our inter international travellers. Now, according to STB's brand health survey just done in January, Singapore remained the most considered destination for leisure and BT mice travellers who are open to travel in the next six months. Singapore is ahead of competing destinations such as Tokyo and Dubai, and with our robust, safe events and travel protocols, we are well positioned to capture tourist, tourism growth. Secondly, we updated our border measures by streamlining health protocols for visitors and expanding travel arrangements with countries and regions to revive tourism and reconnect with the world. Just yesterday, we, we allowed for virtual uh, pre-departure testing, which is again another feedback that we received from many of you. As part of our next phase of border reopening, we replaced vaccinated travel lanes with vaccinated travel framework. And there are no countries on the restricted list at the moment, which means that Singapore, in effect, is reopened for quarantine-free travel to all fully vaccinated visitors from around the world. We also streamlined our border measures to facilitate safe and seamless travel. For instance, short-term visitors no longer need to apply for the vaccinated travel pass. They are free to take any flight or ferry to enjoy quarantine-free travel on arrival here in Singapore. Travellers now own, also do not need to undergo on-arrival testing. They only need to produce a pre-departure test within two days of departure to Singapore. And I know many of you have also asked us to see whether we can revisit that, and we will in due time. In aggregate, these changes send a strong signal to the world that Singapore is ready to reopen our borders safely and that we are committed to reduce the friction of travelling to Singapore. Now, this is a big step for us to reconnect with the world, support international travel recovery, and bolster our status as a vibrant travel hub and regional hub. We will reclaim our place in the world. Now, as people reacquaint themselves with international travel, we expect to see stronger tourism demand this year. And this will be a shot in the arm for our tourism sector, and we must be prepared to gear up for higher traveller volumes. While it will take a few years for international travel demand to return to pre-pandemic levels, we need to effectively pre-recapture the pent-up travel demand in the immediate term so that we can speed up our tourism recovery, something that we've been talking about over the last two years. This year, we will double down on our efforts for Singapore Reimagine, our international recovery campaign to welcome travellers to Singapore to reimagine and discover the fresh and innovative experiences we have to offer the world. Now, if you haven't seen STV's latest Singapore Reimagined clip, Keith will show it later. I shared it widely on my socials, and many of my connections and followers enjoyed it. And I also, uh, with families in my constituency, at my recent Education Awards presentation. I won't spoil it for you, but the clip has won many fans. To Singaporeans, they told me how proud they are to see the many gems that Singapore has to show and offer, our culture, our heritage, our sports, our gardens, our natural environment. The list goes on. But we are not one to rest on our laurels. We will never rest on our laurels. We will invest in potential growth areas to make Singapore even more attractive to the world. At last year's TIC, we shared that sustainability and wellness are two emerging trends that will allow us to capture international travel demand. Since then, we have also actively engaged our tourism industry partners and friends to understand how we can better help you in these new growth areas. 
So allow me to share how we will continue to chart the way forward with you and ramp up our efforts on sustainability and also on urban wellness. Our first area of focus is for Singapore to become a sustainable urban destination to attract a growing segment of conscious travellers. Last year, the government launched the Singapore Green Plan 2030, which sparked a national sustainability movement across many industries to make Singapore a greener and more sustainable city. Many of you are keen to kickstart your sustainability journey and have already started to integrate sustainable practices in your businesses. We will support you in all stages of your journey. To do so, we will launch the Tourism Sustainability Programme, TSP, to provide our tourism businesses with resources that you will find helpful to identify strategic areas as you start and embark on your efforts to expand your sustainability offerings. TSP will focus on three main areas, capability and growth, innovation, and then education and awareness. First, we will support you as you build capability and then train your workforce through the Training Industry Professionals in Tourism, or TIPIT. You can also use the Business Improvement Fund to improve your resource efficiency and then also help to make yourself more competitive, or even more competitive. Second, to encourage innovation, we will support you as you develop and test bit innovative, sustainable solutions to us through our Singapore Tourism Accelerator. And we will build an ecosystem around where innovative technology providers and tourism businesses can together develop solutions in areas such as water, waste, energy, and carbon emissions management that you can use to scale up across the industry. Lastly, we will continue to share best practices and focus areas to help you, to inspire you, to consider new opportunities as you advance and you pursue your sustainability goals. Now, this includes our Singapore Hotel Sustainability Roadmap, which STB and the Singapore Hotel Association launched just last month. The roadmap sets out sustainability targets and strategies on how to reach and achieve these targets. So please make use of the Tourism Sustainability Programme, the TSP, as you think about how to reduce waste, your environmental footprint, and deliver sustainable experiences to your visitors and your customers. So that's the first area of focus. Our second area of focus is to position Singapore as an urban wellness haven, to capture wellness tourism that we expect to flourish post-COVID-19. In 2019, the global wellness tourism market was estimated at over US $720 billion. Now, the pandemic has raised greater awareness about the importance of holistic well-being and wellness tourism is expected to grow in the next five years to reach US $1.1 trillion by 2025. We want to target secondary wellness tourists who seek wellness experiences or healthy options during their travel to Singapore, whether for leisure or business. So you come to Singapore for leisure for business, pick up a spa package or wellness package. There are many opportunities for Singapore to curate wellness experiences that built upon our identity as a city in nature and the green spaces that are woven into our urban landscape. We can use tech and our multicultural roots to develop new, innovative, novel wellness products and experiences that can help people to get fitter and healthier and recharge and rejuvenate their minds. So please join us as we build upon Singapore's destination strengths and build innovative cross-sector partnerships between tourism and wellness players to create new exciting experiences for all. To this end, we will need to drive demand for wellness products, starting with locals. To do so, we will launch the inaugural Wellness Festival Singapore in June. Now, this nationwide festival aims to become an annual calendar peak when the community, business and government, where community, business and government collaborate to create wellness programs for everyone. To further boost tourism development and pledge our commitment to our tourism industry, the government has now earmarked close to half a billion dollars to support tourism recovery in the coming years. We will continue to support and sustain strategic manpower capabilities in our tourism sector, offset business costs, and amplify our international recovery plans. More importantly, we will drive international tourism recovery and help our tourism industry emerge stronger with the reimagined products and services through STB's grants and schemes. So join us. 
We invite all of you to use all of these tools, grants, schemes to recover and to thrive again. Finally, well, it's been a quite crazy two years for all of us. And frankly, it really pained me to see my SDB colleagues having to spend late evenings enforcing COVID safety measures. And our tourism sector, our hotels, our tour guides, our nightlife establishments, having to play so many unfamiliar roles. But every SHN hotel room that you prepare, every safety measure that you helped us to adhere to, undoubtedly saved lives. We know we speak often of our frontline healthcare workers who are our heroes in the pandemic, but we also do not forget the massive sacrifices that you, our tourism industry friends and family partners have made to get us to where we are today. And don't get me wrong, by no means we are not quite out of the woods, but we are stronger. We know how to swim in these rough waters. We have the tools, we have the muscle memory now, and the know-how. Now we need to exercise our natural instincts, our natural talents, our natural inclinations to come up with offerings and products to wow the world and welcome back to our exciting little island. So with that, I sincerely thank you all for all you have done together with us, and I wish you all a wonderful conference. Thank you. Thank you.